Today, I wanted to share two things that we have wanted for over a year that really add to our enjoyment of RVing. Now, this probably all starts with our last RV. Because on our last RV, we had four bikes and two of them were electric bikes and we absolutely loved them. But with that RV, we were able to store them inside and we really liked being able to do that. It wasn't a rack on the back, even though that's a great solution. We loved the idea of being able to tuck those bikes away inside of the RV and have them out of sight, out of mind, and easy to get to and protected from the weather. So with this RV, we didn't quite have that toy hauler aspect that we had on the last RV, but we still really miss those bikes that we had on the last RV. We currently have two solutions that we are using, and one is fairly normal, and one is not so normal. So the first one is pretty typical. It's the electric XP Lite. It's a smaller, lighter, more compact, foldable bike that works pretty well. And the second one is a high boy scooter, which we'll get to is very capable for what it can do. But before we get into what we changed on this one, the one thing that these two things have in common is the fun factor. They are a ton of fun to ride. And as always, I'm gonna put links down in the description to both these so you can see the current price, you can see all the specs that, we're gonna be going over a lot of that, but you can go through and review all of that. But I would also love to hear from you guys down below in the comments if something that really enhances your RVing experience, like we love the paddle boards on our RV, we love getting out on the water, being able to go out with friends and family, it really enhances the RVing experiences for us. But let's dive into why this electric XP Lite works so well for us. So this one's 16 pounds lighter than the original one we had. It has a lighter battery, less fenders, less racks and accessories, no fat tires, no derailleur, it just has a single gear, all to make it that 16 pounds lighter. All those to me are great changes for making a lighter bike. And the single gear really doesn't bother me because you have the electric portion of this bike. So you still have the one through five pedal assist in there. And usually that two to three pedal assist is fantastic. And you're going to have a range of 22 to 31 miles on that two to three pedal assist. If you just want to go pedal assist five, or if you just rather do throttle the whole way, you're going to be going about 20 miles an hour for about 15 miles. Now on the last electric bike that we had, I had broken the screen. I tipped it over and broke it. So the bike still worked, but the screen wasn't really usable anymore. Because it's an Arizona company, I was able to call them up, get a screen and get it replaced. So it's nice to know that if I have a problem, I can get parts and fix something on here. Now, something that I feel like they fixed was the pedal assist. The pedal assist seems much better. There's a better distinguishing factor between one through five on the pedal assist. Number one, you're gonna be working a bit more. And number five, it's really doing a lot to give you a lot of power as you're pedaling. And there's definitely a difference between those different power assists. Now, before the changes that we made on this, let's look at the high boy. Now, what I found with the high boys, it's remarkably comfortable and easy to ride. It's not just for my teenage sons, which is what I was originally thinking. It has 10 inch off-road tires that make it very stable with a max load of 286 pounds. This thing can hold 286 pounds. That's, that's a lot. It has a max range of 28 miles and a max top speed at 25 miles per hour. It has a dual motor one where you could go 40 miles an hour, but I liked this tamed down version at 25 miles an hour. Now, when it comes to climbing the hills, it doesn't have a problem going up the hills and reasonable off-road, it does great at hitting larger rocks on the road was no problem at all. It didn't feel like I was gonna fall off because I hit a rock or a, a little stick in the road or something like that. It handled all that really well. Surprised me how well it did off-road. So a couple of things that I've noticed about riding the high boy, we have about a hundred miles on it at this point. And the range hasn't disappointed. I haven't maxed it out on the range, but I've done a 20 to 22 mile ride on it with about a six to maybe 700 foot elevation gain on that ride. And uh, it handled it like a champ. It did fantastic. So the two big questions that I would have about this with range and versatility of where you can ride it, this works well in those conditions. Now, there are gonna be situations where you can't ride this electric bike and this 
scooter because not every trail is rated to be able to have something like this on there. There are going to be restrictions out there that might just be for a bike. Like there's hiking trails that you can't have bikes on. There's trails that you can't take e-bikes and powered scooters. It is something we want to keep in mind so that we don't use it in a place that we shouldn't be. Now, one thing that I couldn't confirm, but I thought I had read it before we had ordered it, is I thought it had regenerative braking when you're going downhill. And so the, the brakes, you have disc brakes on the front and the back, just like we have on the other electric bike. But when you're going downhill and you hit that back brake, you can feel the motor engage. It's a little bit different feeling, but you can see the battery gauge go up a little bit. It might be giving you a better representation because it's getting a little bit of a rest, so that voltage might be going up. So I want to look into that just a little bit closer. But the one thing that we did change on this, because it is so slim and sleek when you want to go and store it inside the RV, but the handlebars stick out. So I bought some folding handlebars and put it on here. So this little modification helped us in our storage situation on the RV. So we can put it in that front bay if we wanted to. We can put it in the back bay if we wanted to. We have options of where we can put this inside of the RV without taking up a lot of space and making it easier to put in and out with those handlebars folded in. Overall for this, it's been a ton of fun. When we got to a campground one time, we heard a baseball game. So my son and I, he loves riding this. I jumped on the bike, we went down and we watched a little bit of the baseball game from outside of the stands area. But let's talk about what I'd like to change on the bike. There's really not too much that I would want to change on the bike. The seat and the handlebars go up properly the way that they should, because it is a small bike, but they go up high enough to make it comfortable to ride. Now, I'm six foot four, so yes, technically the bike is undersized for me and I should raise the seat up higher even though I'm maxed out on it so I don't have as much bend in my leg as I'm pedaling it but like I said it's comfortable. The one thing that I'm probably going to swap out on this is the kickstand. I know that sounds kind of silly but the kickstand the way that it comes out and it's kind of a square unit that comes down my foot always hits it so if I take the pedal backwards or if I'm pedaling harder my foot will hit that kickstand so if I had a slimmer kickstand it would just make it that much more enjoyable for me riding this bike. But that's just a preference thing. Now for me, I enjoy mountain biking. I'm not a hardcore extreme mountain biker, but if I had a mountain bike and a single track for the day, that would be a very fun day. But these, that's not necessarily what I have in mind for these. These are more for the enjoyment of the family. So if we have a ride that we're doing, I don't mind jumping on a bike and pedaling. And if this makes it more enjoyable for everybody else to join in and have fun, then that's what these are for. It makes riding enjoyable for those that don't wanna ride all the time. It increases the range, increases the enjoyment, and makes a fun day of it. So in a nutshell, that's pretty much what we love about these two solutions for us and this fifth wheel. The capabilities of each of these, the way that they store inside of the RV, tuck in out of the way, and that fun factor. It's just, it's really a good fit for us. So again, I would love to be able to hear what you guys have that really adds to you enjoying the RVing experience. And again, the links will be down in the description to both of these. But I think that's gonna do it for today. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos about RVing, hit that subscribe button. And if we don't see on the road. Hopefully we will see you next video.